Hello and welcome back to the East Lake Pet Talk Podcast. I'm veterinarian Dr. Karen Fling, and I'm here today with Lily, and uh, here's my co-host with his sidekick. Hello everyone, I'm Dr. Will McCauley. Welcome back to the show. I have Hook, uh, the infamous Hook that we talked about on um, the show a couple weeks ago. Um, my little dog that swallowed a fish hook, and actually Lily and Hook have more in common than just being our own personal pets. That's right. This is Lily, my daughter's cat, and uh, I've always said that Lily was the perfect cat. Uh, Uh, She never does anything wrong, not a hairball spit up, I mean nothing. Uh, She's just perfect. And uh, not too long ago when my daughter was away at a workshop, my youngest son noticed that she was hovering over her water bowl. She'd go to her water bowl and act like she wanted to drink, but then she didn't drink. And so, uh, you know, of course I said, let's immediately see what's going on. We brought Lily into the clinic. Uh, We checked lab work and we found on her laboratory test that actually she had some blood near urine. So we said, oh, gosh, that's got to be the source of the trouble. Uh, Ordered an ultrasound. Mm -hmm. And when the ultrasonographer comes to do the the ultrasound, she says, you know, Lily may have blood in her urine, but I I think she has a string in her intestines. Mm -hmm. And so I said, oh, no. No, she doesn't have a string in her intestines. This is Lily. She's the perfect cat. Or so we thought. So we thought. Mm -hmm. Uh, She doesn't chew on anything. She'd, She'd never chew on a string and swallow it. Well, guess what? The sonographer was right, and it turns out she had over six feet of elastic string stuck in her intestinal tract, running from her stomach to her colon. Six feet of string in that little cat. In this little cat, and it was elastic string, Mm -hmm. so it literally stretched from one end to the other. The stretched out distance was even longer than the six feet, Mm -hmm. and uh, we wound up having to do emergency exploratory surgery Mm -hmm. and went in and got that string out and uh, I'm so glad that this cat is here today and so thank goodness that my youngest son just noticed that subtle sign you know hovering over the water bowl looking thirsty but then not really able to drink and it turns out that was our biggest clue and let's talk about how yeah good cats are especially at hiding their sickness Um, and so if they're a little bit off like that it's sometimes hard to tell well are they just feeling well under the weather or do they have six feet of elastic string (laughs) That's right. Their GI tract. right. It, absolutely true. Yeah. So for these kitty cats, even the vet's cat, you've got to really watch them closely mm-hmm. to make sure we're on top of even very subtle signs of illness. Mm-hmm. And, and dogs too. Mm-hmm. And it is surprising how often dogs and cats get into foreign body trouble. And in fact, I know you've mentioned this before, that uh, for the pet health insurance companies, it turns out their number one claim for the top health insurance companies in the country turns out to be foreign body injection. I can totally believe it. Yeah, there's, you know, we don't always have a good explanation for why they eat the string or you know, fish hook or anything like that, but it does happen. Dogs will chew on toys and clothes and um, pieces of furniture, and they will get either obstructions or sometimes even perforations where something actually goes through the lining of the stomach or the intestine, and then we have real big problems because that leads to uh, peritonitis, uh, just more complications. Lily here was on the brink of that. Mm -hmm. She was so close to it because that string that was in her intestines was literally cutting into the intestines. Mm -hmm. She had a very high white blood cell count. Uh, lots of troubles going on. It turns out the the blood in the urine was related to something completely different. Uh, actually, it turns out she's got a little kidney stone. Mm. But the string was really the thing causing her problem. And uh, string is a common foreign body for cats. Mm-hmm. So you need to be watchful about strings, rubber bands. And in this case, it was um, a piece of elastic off of smocking off of my youngest daughter's dress. Had a little string that we cut off and threw in the trash. Mm-hmm. So she literally perfectly went into the trash, got the string out, and ingested it. But cats like rubber bands. Um, They're notorious for picking things out of the trash, especially that have a scent or a flavor. Um, Mint dental floss is a bad one. I've heard that. I've heard, yeah, they do like um, the floss, you know, just something about the mint uh, attracts them to it. Maybe it smells like catnip or Yeah, I don't know. And and of course, they make it to taste good for us. And Mm -hmm. so I'm sure the pets like that too. Yeah, that's why it's always important to keep an eye on what your dog or your cat plays with. You know, make sure that the toys that they have don't have strings attached to them. Um, Watch out if you give them those rope toys that come apart into the strings, into the fibers. I've seen Um, that too. And what are some of the other oddball foreign body cases you've seen? Oh, man. Um, Rocks. Uh, so I've yes. seen plenty of rocks in dogs who I had think. 
one retriever that I had to do three separate surgeries to take mm-hmm. rocks out of the stomach. So mm-hmm. didn't learn the first time. One of those little um, <laughs> old school troll dolls, you know, that have the hair, the wild yeah. hair going on. That oh, was yes. fun to look at on x-ray. Uh, but yeah, a dog had swallowed that. Right. Uh, um, I had one dog that wound up swallowing, must have been nine whole peaches Mm -hmm. but in the end of the day there were nine peach pits left in the stomach that were not dissolving not going forward or backward Mm -hmm. and and that dog was still eating and drinking but just off Mm -hmm. and seemed uncomfortable when you picked him up Mm -hmm. so (laughs) yeah and things you don't think about you know things that are small and you think will pass um sometimes we see dogs weigh pennies um which um it's not you know if a, a labrador eats you know five or 10 pennies, you think, oh, that's fine. They'll pass through. But really, um, the worry there is more the zinc toxicity. Right. Um, so pennies aren't made of copper anymore. Uh, they're made of, I think, 90% zinc or something like that. And well, there's dogs, all kinds of metals in there yeah, that can exactly. be toxic. So any, any coins that dogs swallow, those have to be treated as an emergency because they can, uh, the zinc or whatever's um, that the coins made of can leach out into the body and cause all kinds of problems. Well, that makes me think about another patient I saw that did just that. And it turns out this dog had ingested 35 cents, mostly nickels. And it was actually uh, five nickels and a dime. I mm-hmm. think that's 35 cents. Wound up having a vet bill that ranged up around $3,500. Oh, wow. <laughs> and it was from these coins. And it was a good sized dog mm-hmm. to where I'd actually hoped that maybe we could get the coins to pass. Mm-hmm. And they did not pass. They stayed there. And exactly ha- what happened is what you described, mm-hmm. where the metals in those coins leached out due to the stomach acids yep. acting on those coins. And then this dog actually wound up developing a liver problem and actually kind of liver disease secondary to the metals uh, in the system and so nothing short of surgery was going to fix it so we had to go in get those coins out and the dog recovered and did beautifully and all the liver condition reversed thank mm-hmm. goodness but uh yeah they'll eat some crazy things just you know that the points to you know, the fact that anytime you think your dog or cat may have eaten something that's not supposed to contact your veterinarian immediately um, a lot of times an x-ray can show you know it'll sh- for sure show pennies a lot of times we will see these string form bodies not the form body itself but the way the intestines kind of look like get what's called plicated where they kind of bunch up and we have um, a large degree of clinical suspicion we can say with a pretty good um, you know we have a pretty good track record of saying this does need to go to surgery this doesn't need to go right. to surgery right because some things are not so, radio dense foreign mm-hmm, bodies mm-hmm. so you can't always see it readily but you look for those changes in the intestines and the, mm-hmm. the gas pattern to know what you're dealing with yep, the big thing is just getting your veterinarian involved as soon as you think there's a problem absolutely and that mm-hmm. saved Lily's life for sure saved hooks so, as well and talking about seeing things on x-rays i'm going to see if roderick can put up a few pictures for us i've got some pretty great ones um roderick hopefully can put this one up that is of a dog that ate a telephone um (laughs) another dog that ate a spoon (laughs) and uh, a set of keys so those are probably my top three craziest x-rays that i've come across there's no rhyme or reason to it they just want to pick out the weirdest thing and eat that i feel yeah and and, you know like things like spoons you know can you Mm -hmm. imagine a, a spoon with peanut butter on it i mean that's probably how that spoon got in there probably i've I've seen um skewers Mm -hmm. uh be swallowed whole i've also seen like the little uh steak with the little ring that goes on a filet mignon that Mm -hmm. holds the the bacon on so anything that has a food scent keep those things out of reach those are newsworthy yes boy i'll say news news we don't want to hear about hopefully yeah exactly but news we would like to hear um got some animal news a couple stories um there was a great story that came out of seattle last week about a uh Black Lab mix. They will actually ride the city bus to the dog park on her own. Um, I, I heard about uh-huh. that. What a great story. Uh, yeah, her name is uh, Eclipse. Um, her owner is Jeff Young. And Mr. Young um, was smoking a cigarette at the bus stop one day waiting for the bus to arrive. And he was still smoking a cigarette when the bus was ready to leave. Um, Eclipse jumped on and rode the bus and found, knew the exact stop to get off to go to the dog park. And now she rides it almost every day, apparently. And he will follow her and meet her at the dog park. And yeah, so if he's not together. ready. She goes. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. It's amazing and, how smart they are. They yes. pick up on which yes. stop it is. But they say she looks out the windows and said, oh, this is yeah. my stop. Right. So she's got a huge 
huge fan club. Huge, Even though yeah. we don't recommend best travel no, don't alone recommend for that. dogs, yeah. no, must exactly. have a parent or guardian. I, I think everybody <laughs> knows to look for Eclipse now and yes. uh, watches out for her. So that's, that's great. good. Yes, yeah, that's great. Something a little uh, scarier. Um, there are, is some footage of this. Um, actually, a hippopotamus um, almost attacked a boat in Botswana. Oh my um, goodness! So we think of hippos as big, you know, almost lovable creatures because what we see on movies yeah, um, I think they're dangerous they are actually the most dangerous um, animal in Africa if you um, you know throw out mosquito-borne diseases um, they kill several thousand people a year um, oh, I didn't know it was that high yeah it's a huge number um, so everyone thinks crocodiles and um, you know tigers and lions stuff like that are the most dangerous it's not it's actually hippopotamus hippopotami mm. <laughs> yes what's the plural of that it's hippopotami <laughs> yeah. um, so yeah well, just keep an eye on funny. those yeah so um, definitely well, weird um, weird thing to think weird about. piece of news mm-hmm. fun fact fortunately yeah. we don't have to worry about that much here, here in in dallas mm-hmm. uh so that's good news yeah um but speaking of plurals uh that made me think about the the news relative to the north carolina hotel the aloft hotel mm-hmm. and uh they are having rescue dogs as their lobby greeters in the hotel and so they've got kind of a neat program they've started where they have dogs that need homes and that are well behaved great temperament dogs mm-hmm. actually live there in the hotel and be available in the lobby as lobby greeters the guests have come to love staying at that hotel because you know of course having a pet companion while you're away is a wonderful thing yeah and uh apparently they've made some great matches with these got some adoptions out of it that's a great idea you know just thinking of uh, these new and novel ways to introduce people to potential uh, pet adoptions. Right. That's, that's Makes great the hotel stay much better, and hopefully you will find a new best friend that mm-hmm. way. I'm sure they have to be well-behaved to do that. Yes, right and that kind of leads us to another important point. Mm-hmm. It's time to celebrate National Train Your Dog Day or Train Your Dog Month. Mm-hmm. Um, a lot of people have been a part of that here lately, especially as people have, during time off, during the holidays, decided to adopt new pets. Mm-hmm. And so I really think good behavior is such an important thing for for dogs and cats Mm -hmm. to have um, because you really can enjoy your pet so much more out in social settings and get to experience great things and you can uh, tell which of the two pets here better behaved (laughs) hopefully jump down and whining (laughs) at the floor where lily's just hanging out and doing. yeah well uh, lily's doing the cat thing trying to look sort of small in this setting but uh, but she is a good cat yep and uh, cats can learn obedience too and Mm -hmm. actually a lot of them do learn to do tricks really neat like to do commands and videos i've seen yeah. cats doing crazy things you know well very, and, and your cat's the one that can use the toilet is my that cat right? can use the toilet yeah mm-hmm. samson will use the toilet um, well we so. ought to have samson on to kind of demonstrate That's, yeah, the technique exactly, sure. <laughs> get some video of samson yeah, exactly. well, i don't know if he'd i think if I that'd some, be too personal i think i have some pictures i can send yeah <laughs> but um another thing to remember um especially about national train your dog month um is that it's a process and it's not just the dog that's being trained it's also you learning how to um how to give your dog commands the feedback that you give mm-hmm. so it's really train your dog and train your owner month Um, right and and pets generally really love this i always say you know when they do commands and follow uh, our directives and respond and you have that interaction and that communication it's kind of like giving your dog or cat a job Mm -hmm. and so i think their self-esteem goes up i think they really love it Mm -hmm. and uh, it's a lot of fun for everybody yeah it really is yeah and really just even the most basic stuff comes in real handy just teaching them to sit to stay um to you know, stop barking. Um, right. That's, you know, not something that takes a lot of time to teach a dog um, or a cat. Um, and it can be, while being great for parties, it's also good for your sanity when you can absolutely. tell a dog to sit and stay and not come tear into the kitchen. It, it's or, a good thing. Yeah, absolutely. It's a good thing. Yep. So what percentage of pet owners do you think have ever done some tor- some type of obedience training? What would mm. you guess? I can guess... Uh, hmm. I've got a number in mind. Yeah, maybe 50%. You're pretty darn close. Actually, it's only 47% of pet owners have actually ever experienced obedience work with their pet. Mm -hmm. So hopefully in 2015, there will be a lot more people to add to that roster to Mm -hmm. help work with their pets and help them to be better better citizens. Yeah. And there's plenty of resources out there to learn how to uh, train your pet, not only the shows and um, other podcasts, um, but there are actual classes. A lot of um, pet stores, PetSmart comes to mind. They have, I think it's weekly obedience courses where you can take your dog in along with other dogs and owners and they teach you. I think it's the basic stuff, but a lot of times that's what you want to start with anyway. Right. And there's another great program here in the Dallas area where they meet at Flagpole Hill in the White Rock Lake area. Mm -hmm. And then of course at East Lake as the weather 
gets better. Uh, we do a wonderful class up on the garden roof deck at East Lake, so that's another good thing to check into. Mm -hmm. But whether you're here in Dallas or somewhere else in the country watching or listening, um, there is an AKC-sponsored program called the Canine Good Citizenship class, and it's great. It really teaches dogs and I don't think they include any cats. Right. Sorry, Lily. <laughs> um, but it, it teaches dogs how to respond and learn and behave in a way that they're socially accepted out at restaurants and public places, at hotels mm -hmm. like the Aloft Hotel. Mm -hmm. um, so places like that. And then, you know, of course, we stayed at the Hotel W recently mm -hmm. uh, with my son's cat. And mm -hmm. that was a great experience. Just loved it. Yeah. So That's something have, to keep in mind when you yeah. do take your pets to these places. You are an ambassador for the pet owner community. And so. So if your dog or cat, I guess, is acting up, um, you know, in people's minds who see that, they're going to have um, a bad a bad taste in their mouth right. the next time they see a dog and come in, into a restaurant or a hotel. Or, right. You know. In fact, uh, the trainer that does the canine good citizenship class at Eastlake mm -hmm. has said, my mission in doing this class is not only because I love training, but it's also because I want my dogs to be welcome wherever I go. So mm -hmm. her mission is to help others uh, kind of carry that ambassador role forward so i agree with that that's a good view to take yep. yeah yep. Uh, good good uh mission for 2015 get good them, resolution get them trained get them socialized mm -hmm. yep. right. well if um, anyone out there is looking for a pets of course we always like to talk about um the pets we have available at elpo um east lake pet orphanage our pet of the week this week is one that's near and dear to my heart um he's a big orange and white cat named jaeger um spelled, and he has good behavior doesn't he, he? has good behavior he is uh i will say he's the chillest cat i've ever seen he gets along with dogs and cats and people. Sometimes we'll let him out in the clinic and he'll walk around the doctor's office and lay on my keyboard while I'm trying to type notes. So that's not so fun, but um, he <laughs> likes it. And he is looking for a, a, a home. Um, right. And he's had kind of an interesting background, a little bit of hardship in his he, earlier life, hasn't he? He did. Um, he was <laughs> brought into us um, and somewhat you know, left by the owner here um, at, the, uh, at the clinic. Um, and we found out that he had actually an eye problem called Di I always mispronounce it, dystichiasis. Dystichiasis, Dist I think, technically is the yeah. way you say that. So it was a hair growing from the eyelid down towards the surface of the eye instead of growing out. Um, right, yeah, so that hair just kind of puncturing and penetrating exactly. into his little Rubbing cornea. Rubbing a little corneal Awful. ulcer, yep. So um, hard to pronounce, easy to fix. We took a little <laughs> um, little flap of skin out and pulled that area up, and he is fine now. He has a little dark spot on his eye, um, but Roderick has some great pictures of him we can show, and he is a well-behaved, great cat. Um, yeah. and Super appreciative for all the work you did, so yep. that's great. Yep. Well, yes, uh, please call us and uh, let us know if you're interested in adopting Jaeger. He's a terrific cat. Mm -hmm. um, how old do you think he is? Um, probably six or seven range, okay. probably. Yep. in that bracket, yep. but uh, still pretty young and uh, mm -hmm. apparently healthy in yeah, all other respects. Healthy. So yep. Yep. that's great. Just needs a chance and a good place to go. That's right. And if you do want to contact uh, us or the show, uh, we always remind you to leave us a voicemail at our phone number, 972 808 Six zero three eight. Um, of course, we always like you to subscribe uh, via YouTube by clicking on the subscribe button right there. You can also find us on iTunes. Go search for East Lake Pet Talk Podcast. There's a link below. And of course, if you do want to send us a email message, we always like questions um, or comments. Uh, send us an email at podcast at welovepets.net. That's great. And I know we're going to be talking a little bit more about cats next week. Tell mm -hmm. us a little bit about that, Dr. McCauley. One of my favorite subjects to talk about, um, feline viral respiratory disease. So these upper respiratory tract infections that are very contagious in places like catteries, vet clinics, or multiple cat households. A lot of times we'll see sneezing, coughing, um, eye discharge, nasal discharge, and so a lot right. of stuff to and, talk and about. And I've heard a statistic that probably 90% excuse me, I can't even say it, 95% of cats mm -hmm. are exposed at some point to one of these contagious respiratory bugs. And for a great many of these, a lot of these are preventable, aren't they? Very preventable with vaccines. Yeah. Okay. Looking forward to talking about it next week. All right. Well, we're about out of time for today, That's but right. we'll be back next week, same time, same place for more of the Eastlake Pet Talk podcast. Thanks so much. Take care.